Resident Evil is a series that is, quite understandably, defined by its enemies. The horde of monsters that came pouring out of the minds of Capcom truly are the stuff of nightmares. Now sure, as the series has gone on, we're basically looking at more foes that have just tentacles and tings on, but there really are some absolute terrors in there. Nemesis, Regenerators, even the zombies themselves. But of course, there are even more horrors to be found on the cutting room floor, which is why I've decided to don the lab coat today and shades in honour of my favourite villain, Albert Wesker, to take you lovely people here to the Umbrella Newcastle division and showcase the what-ifs and what-the-hell-are-those that were scrapped in the Resident Evil franchise. With this in mind, I'm Jules, and this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 terrifying Resident Evil enemies you'll never get to see. These are so bloody impractical, what was he thinking? <laughs> Number 10, Man Spider, Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil Zero. Let's begin with a creature that couldn't wait to get its many, many legs over on a night out, the Man Spider. It's not a catchy name, I know, but it's much more digestible than its alias of, ew, what is that, get off me? As the name implies, this creature is part human, part spider, and all parts terrifying, and originally was going to be found in the Nest secret lab area of Resident Evil 2. Now, the Nest Umbrella Lab animal testing is well documented, and their introduction of the T-virus into organisms often resulted in huge growth and strength of its subjects. This is why we see the massive spiders, moths, and other oversized creatures in the first three games. And it's here that a possible strain of animals' blood might have been injected into a human subject. Umbrella may have even spliced human DNA into a T-virus strain and injected this into a spider in order to create a bioweapon with the intelligence to understand orders and the physical strength and dexterity of a spider. Ugh. Worse still for any arachnophobes out there is that this creature actually got far enough in development that you can find an in-game model and AI of it in what is now dubbed as Resident Evil 1.5, the original Resident Evil 2 that was scrapped and then restarted partway through its creation. There's even a clip of William Birkin attacking a man spider in this early build. But don't worry, as the legacy of this leggy creature lives on in the liquor which the man spider was converted into after the 1.5. By reboot. Great stuff. Number 9. The Laughing Killer, Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles. Arguably the most frightening things out there in real life are the things that we'll never actually see coming. Enter the Laughing Killer, who according to its concept art and description would have hung from the ceiling using those massive hooks that it has wrapped around its arms and most likely used them to carve up flares like they were a bloody Sunday roast. From the prison outfit, it makes sense that this would have been an enemy in encountered in the Code Veronica portion of Dark Side Chronicles, which was an on-the-rail shooter that basically acted as a kind of a bridge retreading of the most popular Resident Evil games and moments. The original art also reveals that there was potential for the Laughing Killer to have many different headpieces, which informs something about the lore around it. Now, if these were indeed at one point prisoners on Rockfort Island, they may have well been Umbrella soldiers themselves, who after being dosed with certain strains of viruses would have turned into these monsters. The rapid muscle growth could be forcing the creature's face into a smile, and it could have caused the subject to drive into mania and uncontrollable laughter. The mouth coverings on some of the designs might insinuate that it was a preventative measure to stop the bioweapon biting allies or even each other, and the face coverings could have been an effort to mask the illumination coming from the laughing killer's eyes. Either way, it unfortunately didn't make the cuts, and to be honest, after seeing these images, I'm very glad about that. Number 8. Tyrant Inferior, Resident Evil 2 and 3. Now, with a name that includes the word inferior, you might be remiss for passing this model of Tyrant off as little more than a minor threat, but this special enemy also had the rather disturbing and utterly pants-wetting ability to run. Seeing as this was meant to appear in one of the original games, you know, where tank controls were order of the day, this would have been absolutely horrible to come up against. The Tyrant Inferior is so named as it's actually a regular zombie that has undergone a mutation after necrosis has set in. Now, the original plans for this monster were that it would have randomly been part of larger groups of zombies, kind of like how in uh, Dead Rising you can sometimes see the zombie queen in the other hordes. Except here, the death of a Tyrant Inferior 
bacteria wouldn't net you with some sort of big blast in bug bomb and would have only served to remind you that there's probably another one just around the corner. Yay. Number seven, Zombie Ape, Resident Evil 2. Another casualty of the Resident Evil 1.5 cull, the Zombie Ape does actually have a model, AI, and a pretty terrifying trigger point in the game, but for reasons known only to Capcom, was shelved during production. Now, as we all know, from 28 days later, zombie-esque monkeys running around are just terrifying. But this isn't your average run-of-the-mill marmoset. These badass baboons have been hitting the roids as they are monstrous in their physical. Physique. Now, originally, these creatures would have gone ape on the player once they reached the RPD parking lot, and they would have burst from an umbrella-marked van, and then later on would have also burst from the Umbrella Lab's ventilation system at random. However, interestingly enough, these weren't meant to reflect that Umbrella had been testing on all of these poor primates. Some of them were meant to make up a Raccoon City Zoo exhibit that had unfortunately been infected, but this was another area of the game that was lost in the reshoot. Shuffle. Luckily enough, in some way, the pseudo-resurgence of this creature came about in the form of the Eliminators, a monkey biological weapon that you could find in Resident Evil Zero, and they are goddamn awful. Number six, Super Dynamite Man, Resident Evil 4. Sounding pretty much like the worst and at the same time best superhero ever, the Super Dynamite Man was meant to appear in Resident Evil 4, but along with a series of other rejected Ganado ideas, never made it through to development. Now, while other creatures on this list elicit more horror in terms of their appearance, the reason that Super Dynamite Man makes the cut this time is because of its immediate threat. These infect would have likely come into play when Leon enters the mines due to them likely using their dynamite to blast away at rock faces. Now the SDM would have run up to the player with their ample collection of TNT and detonated themselves, which would have been absolutely terrifying to experience. Plus, looking closer at the design, you can see a more skeletal face, implying that these might not have been worthy subjects of the infection and may have also been why they've been strapped up with explosives, possibly by their own peers. It's a shame that this didn't make the cut, especially when you realise that it's kind of a subtle reference to Pig Josh from the absolute classic Western game Red Dead Revolver, which was also published by Capcom. Number five, Liquor Zombie Resident Evil 2 Remake. Easily one of the most standout moments of the original Resident Evil 2 was the introduction of the liquor to the player. Touching that pool of blood only to look up and see that lashed tongue monstrosity hanging from the ceiling was utterly terrifying. And when you know how the liquor came into being, it gets even more terrifying. Now, in some cases, those infected with the T-virus will experience a second round of mutations once the host, I don't know, falls into a coma or can't feed anymore. Now, these crimson heads, as they were dubbed, are basically the virus's last-ditch attempt at survival. Umbrella, being the nasty force that they are, decided to force this exact condition on their subjects in order to push this last-ditch attempt even further. The liquors were the result of this Epsilon strain of the virus, and these cut zombie lickers from the Resident Evil 2 remake are the middle point between zombies and our brainy friends here. The thought of seeing a zombie's head crack open to reveal that second stage would have been absolutely terrifying, but alas, this was left on the cutting room floor. Number four, Kid Napper, Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles. There's nothing more humiliating than falling foul of the crows in the original Resident Evil games. I'm sorry, Forrest, it is very true. True. But at least you get to take out your rage on these feathered foes in Resident Evil 4 onwards, right? Well, maybe it's best that you save these bullets, because originally the Dark Side Chronicles was going to have an enemy called the Kid Napper. Now, this winged beast would have been much more mutated than the crows found in the earlier games and would sport a huge set of powerful talons with which it would pick up a person and carry them off or, as the game would have likely have done, be used to hold you in place while it pecked your bloody face in. What a charming thought, right? Where the original crows were kind of akin to Polly want a cracker, this is more akin to Polly's gonna crack you in half. Terrifying. Number three, The Hookman, Resident Evil 4. The Hookman is pretty much an enemy solely designed to make you throw away your Funko Pop collection, as you will not want to see any more dead doll eyes for a long old time after dealing with this. During development for Resident Evil 4, the game went through several stages of ideas, one of which was known internally as hallucination. 
Now this version of the game saw Leon infected with Las Plagas, pretty much like the final build, but here the infection would cause him to hallucinate as he travelled through the castle, and of course that meant that the enemies that he faced in these segments were much more outlandish in their design. Enter the Hookman, an enemy with a porcelain face and a massive hook arm weapon who would step out of paintings and begin to chase Leon. Now the thought of a tyrant style unkillable enemy is bad enough, but one that could appear from anywhere and who carries an emotionless mask for a face, that is a huge nope from me. Number two, The Servant, Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7 was a bold departure for the series that looked to shake up the formula and inject horror right into your bloody face, even more so if you played it in VR. Gee, I still have nightmares. And there was nowhere near short of gross enemies that just got all up in your business. In fact, business seems to be the order of the day for this next cut enemy, as the servant was originally going to be part of the Baker family, albeit in a rather undisclosed way. Now, this cut character only has one image of it, and it's pretty scrawny looking fella just holding a lantern. Big whoop, I hear you say. We've, we've all got torches on our phones, and some of, us, some of us haven't been hitting the gym as much as we'd like. So maybe it's just like a hipster who just got lost in the swamp, took a wrong turn? Well, true. You could apply that logic to it, but when you know what the executive producer Jun Takuichi said of the game's early development, a certain enemy that didn't make the cut was meant to force the player to hold their breath, otherwise they would storm out of the swamp and drag them into the darkness. This would fit the servant really well, and can you imagine how terrifying that would have been? It was cut, however. Because get this, according to test players, they too began to hold their breath and the company didn't want people to get hypoxia, which is basically starving your brain of oxygen from holding your breath too long. It literally would have killed people with terror. What a brilliant enemy. <laughs> and number one, the tortured Resident Evil 6. And finally, we end on a creature that is just... That's simply gross. I mean, the tortured is a hulking mass of a monster whose body has become riddled with gaping holes, and if the thought of a shambling Swiss cheese doesn't immediately frighten you, then what comes out of those holes will. The idea behind the tortured was that enlarged lice and bugs would swarm out of the crevices and attack the player. How it would do that is unclear, but in the concept art it shows both a mass of bugs following the tortured, but also that they might fire out at the player, placing this as both a threat in close combat and at range. Either way, it's disgusting, and one made even worse when there were rumours floating about that this infected host would still be alive and conscious of all the bugs scurrying in and out of it, making it cry out in muffled pain until you put it out of its misery. Absolutely grim. So thanks Umbrella, thanks the family, thanks Wesker, thanks Tricell, and thank you for watching. I hope this has been frightening and enlightening. As always, I've been Jules. These have been 10 cut Resident Evil creatures that unfortunately we'll never get to see. Who knows if they'll be showing up in Resident Evil 8 or if Resident Evil 3 Remake will chuck some of these bad boys in there. Just get on in there, prod you in. Either way, only time will tell. Please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing, and that is that I hope you have a fantastic day, whatever you are getting up to. Go out there and absolutely smash at your ledge. We've seen a lot of monsters on here, but you don't need to be one of them. If you need a helping hand getting through the day and balancing your energy levels, getting yourself in the right frame of mind, then do not worry, because friends, family, professionals in the support industry, all of us have your back and want you to do well. Now go out there and smash at your big ledge. As always, I've been Jules, you can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And if you want to do something a little bit extra, then maybe you can go check out my board game channel, which is called Live and Let's Dice. I run it here and just me and a few friends just play stuff like Warhammer after work. It's a good laugh. Hope to see you over there. If not, I still hope you have a fantastic day. Remember, you've been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.